All right, welcome everyone. Um, in this video, uh, going to take a look at another OneNote doc. And what caught my eye with this one is that it was the first one that I that I came across, even though it's it's a little bit dated now, just because it's taken me some time to record this. But it was the first one I came across that was actually password protected. So not a surprising evolution. Um, I haven't looked at the data, at least in Malware Bazaar, to see how common the uh, the password protected documents are. But this gave me an opportunity to um, you know kind of take a look at this document with a different tool, one I've been um, hearing about in terms of OneNote analysis, um, and just to see if there was anything you know particularly unique or clever about them. The spoiler is that there isn't, but let's take a look anyway. Uh, the, tr the tool that I chose is one that seems to be quite popular with OneNote analysis. This is called OneNote Analyzer. As you can see here, it's a, a C-sharp based tool, uh, so .NET based. There's a number of features here, but at the end of the day, it's, it's very similar conceptually to one dump, which is what I've used up until this point. And that is we want to just understand what's happening within the document. We want to extract any scripts or you know directly attached executables. So this allows us to do that. Um, it does a little bit more though, and you'll see with some of the output as we go through this demo, that it also automates the process of extracting links or URLs. Uh, um, but basically it's a, Let's see if it has the, the description here. Uh, Page-wise text from the OneNote document, and uh, and a couple of other categories here. So we'll talk. We'll take a look at the the uh, you know the actual output here as we go. Okay, uh, the document was shared by Zero X Toxin. Uh, so appreciate them doing that. Not only did they share the the sample here on Malware Bazaar, but they also shared the password. So that's really helpful. In fact, when I first downloaded this um, and realized it was password protected, I couldn't find the password. So I would really appreciate them going ahead and, and providing us with that additional information. Uh, the document here you can see in OneNote application itself, the section is password protected. Uh, we have to click enter, uh, click here, press enter to unlock. So this is where we would need to provide that password. I won't do that quite yet. Um, as you can imagine, I don't actually know, I didn't take the time to look at how under the hood OneNote is encrypting or compressing the contents. So I would imagine that it's documented somewhere on the uh, on MSDN or the Microsoft Developer Network, but uh, I didn't go ahead and, and, and do that. Uh, because I figured we'd take a look at what the actual output looks from a password protected doc with with, uh, with our tool here. Okay, so OneNote Analyzer with pass. You'll see that the with pass part is um, updated code in order to handle passing along the password to decrypt the document. Um, pretty straightforward in terms of usage. Uh, you really just need to provide the file, so the path to the file that you're analyzing, and then optionally the password. So let's see, I have this located on my desktop, one directory down. If I don't provide the password, you'll see that at least this version, which I just downloaded at the time that I recorded and, and very close to when I posted this video, you'll see that there is uh, just an exception that gets generated, basically saying, hey, you're trying to access a password protected doc and you didn't provide a password. Okay, so we can fix that. I'll add the pass, zero, one, two, three, four. And now you'll see that everything begins to work. Um, the extraction takes place, it will extract to a folder, uh, the default appears to be malware content, and then subfolders from there that'll contain all of the different artifacts that it's extracting. Uh, you might notice right off the bat here that we have an executable def underscore FUD, so fully undetectable um, dot exe, and based off of these sizes, you, you might suspect that they're all the same binary, uh, but we'll go ahead and hash those just to confirm 100% that they are. Well, that's doing the extraction. We can take a look at the document. So now we can provide the password and you'll see very similar techniques to you know, OneNote usage up to this point. There is an image inside that looks like it's some sort of a remittance or an invoice. There is an image here that is an overlay. And if we move that, we'll find there is our, you know, the things that they wanted, the authors wanted to get executed. So in this case, it's this, in you know, the same five executable attached. So anywhere, uh, you know, with the idea being that anywhere you click on this, you'll you'll double click and execute at least one instance here. Um, oftentimes, you'll also see scripts 
scripts being the ab objects that are attached. And then we can use tools like OneNote Analyzer or, or OneDump to extract the scripts, analyze the scripts to understand what's going on. So these are a little bit more straightforward in that we don't we don't have any intermediary stages, or at least you know I would I would suspect there's there's fewer intermediary stages. This is probably the main payload or the main malware that the authors were trying to distribute. Okay, uh, looks like our extraction is complete. So what I'm going to do just to make exploring this content maybe a little bit easier is to open that folder, malware content, and just explore that here in Visual Studio Code. As you can see, we have our executables, really no point in clicking on those. Uh, we have hyperlink documents. So any hyperlinks that were extracted, we have images and Visual Studio Code will present those images here. So there's the remittance and then there's our double click to view. We saw those earlier. Uh, any text that it was extracted, I'm not 100% clear on, on how the text extraction works, but um, you can see here that this, this text certainly was embedded in the OneNote document. And then this is just a conversion, I believe a conversion of the OneNote doc. Yeah, sure, you can see that it was, it was working on it while I was working on it. So it just converted the, the OneNote document to an image and it, it captured it while I was kind of messing around with the layout there. Um, so there's all the different components. Um, again, if, if the attachments, if it was a script, then here we would have scripts that we could grab and analyze. Okay, in this case, it is an executable. So what we can do is just get a hash here. This confirms my suspicion that it, it is in fact all the same hash, which means it's all the same file. And now we can go ahead, let's copy that hash, go to a place like Malware Bazaar or Triage. It's not actually on the Malware Bazaar, so I should upload that there. Uh, but it is on triage, and most most important at this point, it just tells us what type of malware was trying to be distributed here. In fact, we probably can go back, and you'll see that that was the author, or uh, I'm not. I guess maybe the malware bizarre pipeline tagged this as a red line sample, as well as some of the config extraction, uh, the different uh, campaign that it was associated with. So here we can see that it was in fact distributing red line. Okay, um, there was a couple of things that happened with the execution of this Redline Stealer itself that I want that I went ahead and and just out of curiosity, I I, I lo opened this up. This is this is a .NET binary in DNSpy and took a look at that. So uh, in the next video, this will be a, I guess a two part then. In the next video, we'll take a look at how to essentially get to the unpacked version of Redline when we're missing some information. So I hope you will go ahead and watch the video. I'll put a link to it here at the end. Um, in the meantime, hope you enjoyed the video. If you have any questions, comments, feedback, please feel free to leave them in the comments section. I look forward to hearing from you and I'll talk to you all in the next video.